Hello everyone. This morning I wanted to touch just a little bit on spiritual warfare. We are in a battle, aren't we? Uh, you know, the immortal words of John Paul Jones have echoed down through the past 200 or so years, uh, sort of injecting iron into the backbones of many seasoned warriors, veterans, soldiers, right? When battling against odds that would have caused uh, many warriors, many seasoned soldiers to wave the white flag of, of surrender, Jones bellowed out, I have not yet begun to fight. And he encouraged his men and they fought on to victory. They fought against the Baltic fleet and the 44 gun Serapis and they won. Well, you know, I've often used the, the exact same words uh, when fighting against the wiles of our powerful spiritual enemy Satan and his demonic forces. It feels good to win spiritual battles, doesn't it? And it stings like the dickens when we lose one. But even in the midst of our losses, there's things to glean, there's things to learn, right? There's courage and determination, lessons to learn, wisdom to gain, right? For the next go round, you know, some growth can only take place during our losses, when we're experiencing a loss. And that's why God sometimes allows us to lose a battle. So we'll realize the areas where we're weak and the areas that need work. But you know, the Lord is on our side and we will never surrender, right? We're never gonna give up. We will not stop striving for perfection, for holiness. And no matter how many times our own flesh may trip us up, you know, and we may slip and fall, the Lord is on our side. You know, we might lash out in anger at someone or, or act out of pride or a bruised ego or something. You know, we'll have to go and ask for forgiveness. We will rise up and fight on towards perfection, towards holiness, because we know the end of the story from the beginning because God's told it to us in his word. God has declared that he will continue the work of sanctifying all who are in Christ. That means making us holy. And God cannot lie. It's completely against his nature. He's promised to complete the work within us that he has begun, within the redeemed, within those who are saved. Romans 8 declares our victory in these words. Those that he predestined, whom God predestined, he also called. And those that he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. Now notice the past tenses in those verses. That means it's as good as done. We will be glorified in Christ. Another uh, verse in Romans 8 says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time during this life on earth are not even worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Wow, glory in us. One day, God is going to hold us up and say, Look what I've done in this child, this dirty, filthy sinner. Look what I've created. And that's you, and that's me. Praise God. Hey, devil. I've not yet begun to fight. <laughs> you haven't seen anything yet. Besides, the battle is the Lord's. Remember what David told, told Goliath and the, the Philistines. The battle's not mine, it's the Lord's. And he's gonna defeat you. I am gonna place my faith in God continuously. And not just a, a once and done for salvation. No, it's a continuous thing. I had faith to be saved. And now I'm having faith to be sanctified, to be made holy, and to work in partnership with God as he works in me to become like Jesus. Now, I don't believe the devil has a literal tail. You know, he don't have horns and a pitchfork <laughs> painted red and everything. But if he did have a tail, it would be tucked up under his belly and he'd be running off like a whipped pup. <laughs> Christ is our champion. He's our victor. He's already defeated the devil at Calvary and at the grave. Praise God. And now in the case of winning our souls, he's defeated the devil. God is more than capable of completing his projects. 
and you and I are his passionate projects. And that's what he's completing. You and I are his passionate creation in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2.10a states, we are his workmanship. You know, and God didn't save us only to lose us again to the serpent of wickedness. No, he has a purpose for each soul. He has, Ephesians 2.10b, created us in Christ Jesus to do good works, which he hath before ordained that we should walk in them. In other words, he's got work for you to do. He's got work for me to do, jobs for us that are specific to our individual personalities and character traits and talents and gifts. Make no mistake, if you've been born of the Spirit, the Word of God promises, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, a new creation. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. God is faithful to do his part. He's able to do his part. Jude 124 states, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. <laughs> oh, glory, hallelujah. What an awesome promise. Christ has, Christ has already defeated the enemy and our salvation is won. We now fight to be transformed into the likeness of the Holy Son of God. Our part is merely to continue submitting to God. And yes, we're going to suffer with Christ, but his spirit is also going to offer supernatural enablements, supernatural assistance, like his peace and his joy and his strength, his guidance, the strength to endure. We cannot lose. God is on our side. <laughs> Listen up, Satan, wherever you are. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we proclaim that you ain't seen nothing yet. It's as if we have not even begun to fight. We shall never give up, never give in, and we will never surrender. Because we are on the winning side. Kick mud, devil. God bless y'all.